Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, go online to GEICO.com, or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. Don Lebertard. The bifocal eyeglasses. Stugatz. Marcus Mariota. Growing up. Right in front of our our, our, our eyes. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. John McEnroe going to join us in a half hour, 1230 Eastern on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. This Saturday, if you haven't heard about it, exclusively on ESPN, it's the Battle of Brisbane. Manny Pacquiao will defend his WBO welterweight Title live as he aims for his 60th career win facing Australia's undefeated number one world rated contender, Jeff the Hornet Horn. The Battle of Brisbane, Saturday, July 1st, 10 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Adrian Wojnarowski is reporting that the Clippers are trading Chris Paul to the Houston Rockets. After Paul informed the Clippers he'd sign with Houston, the teams agreed to a deal sending Patrick Beverly, Sam Decker, Lou Williams, and a 2018 first-round pick to the Clippers for Chris Paul. And finally, a suspect attempted to avoid arrest by handing a deputy a Monopoly car during a traffic stop in Minnesota. Dakota County Sheriff's Office shared a photo of the get-out-of-jail-free card the suspect handed the deputy as he was preparing to arrest him for an outstanding warrant. That's excellent. That is so great, man. You got to let him off. <laughs> Copper, you got to let him off, no matter what he's accused of. He gives you the Monopoly card. You got to say, you know what? Clever enough, you're off. Right. Whatever crime you committed, even if it was against my family, you're free. Just on creativity? Yeah, you're free, you're free, you're free yeah. to go. Yeah, you're free you're to right. go. I'm with you on that. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. He was a murderer. That's right. You got a Monopoly card. <laughs> it's good. One free murder. So Dominique Foxworth is in with us. I know who you would use yours, yours on. You want to try that again? I know who you would use yours on. <laughs> Such a good line, too. <laughs> um, I love how much power the players have in basketball. If you're thankful for basketball offseason madness, be thankful that the player has power because Chris Paul just forced the hand of the Clippers. My guess is that doesn't happen a whole lot to Steve Ballmer. No. In business, he just forced the hand of the Clippers, made them trade him to Houston because he just goes in and tells them, hey, I want to play with Harden. That's where I'm signing as a free agent. And then they have to get something for him. Russell Westbrook is headed down this path. Be real curious to think to see how Russell Westbrook is thinking right now. I can tell you what he's thinking. He's thinking, I'm going to go to the place that is going to destroy Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors. And so you've got Chris Paul going to Houston. Houston is arming itself. Houston wants to go play against Golden State. And D'Antoni, what D'Antoni's gift is, is making even pedestrian point guards great. And now he's got a great point guard. I just don't know. When I say I don't know, Dominic, you got cut off by the clock in the last segment. When I say I don't know how much better it makes them, it's because I don't know how much better it makes them. I think it makes them better, but I just don't know how to measure how much better. They had 55 wins last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Maybe maybe I was creating a straw man, but it felt like I've been hearing a lot of people say that that, that doesn't match up, that lineup doesn't match up. And those guys are versatile. It's not as if my point is that Harden can shoot and he can play off of the ball and Chris Paul can shoot and also play off of the ball. So, I mean, I think it works. I think either of them can run the point in that situation. So I And I think one of the major criticisms or drawbacks to that usage rate for Harden is he was exhausted. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he didn't, he barely yeah. played. Well, I, I've got to defer to the knowledge of Chris Paul. He badly wanted to play with James Harden, and I'm going to defer to Chris Paul's basketball knowledge on that one. He chose. He had his choice of places. Sure, he could have San Antonio. He could have forced their hand to be traded anywhere. Correct, and he chose Houston. But one of the things I love. What is the modern analogy I can make for Charlie Brown? always kicking the ball. Lucy puts the ball down, and Charlie Brown always gets fooled by it. What is the modern equivalent? Phil on Modern Family, he always falls on the same step. That never gets fixed. Okay, very good. This is Stugatz. 
because Stugatz has spent the entire... This is the Knicks fan. It's happening. People are moving all over the place, and Knicks fan, with all this unearned arrogance, wants to get in there and be like, basketball mecca, we're the ones who get the free agents. And so Stugatz has spent the entire break talking about Mm -hmm. 2018, the Knicks are getting everybody. Yep. LeBron, Chris Paul, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, the Banana Boat team is going to be in New York. And I just love that for... 15 damn years doing this with Stugatz, he always goes after the Charlie Brown kick. <laughs> he always goes after the modern family step. But this time it's happening. Right, of course. The stars are aligned. Uh huh. All these guys have one year left on their deals. All four of them, Wade's probably going to be out of Chicago any day now, and then all four can choose where they want to go. And I believe they're going to choose to go to New York because... LeBron James loves Carmelo Anthony. That is his best friend, and Carmelo wants to be close to his kid, and his kid's in New York, and LeBron loves the idea in the final chapter playing with his best friends and taking that organization back to prominence. This is what I love. This is what I love about everything that's happened And Popovich is going to coach him. Because Stugatz is the caricature cartoon of the gas bag sports fan. He is now enthused about a possibility... That isn't going to happen, that he always gets excited about, but not merely that. A possibility that involves all players that he has crushed <laughs> over the last four years. Just crushed. Called Chris Paul a fraud. He is. Doesn't want Carmelo Anthony on the Knicks. Hates the way LeBron James does business. Says, <laughs> says Dwayne Wade is awful. And now he wants all of them. Like, this is so Stugatz in every way. Yeah. Just get me all of them. I Keep in mind, Stugatz wanted a 50-year-old Scottie Pippen for the Knicks because he <laughs> just loves having the names. <laughs> he wants like, just names. Yeah. Just give me names. If I told you right now Michael Jordan was coming out of retirement at 60. Yeah. Stugatz would want him on the Knicks. Right. Yeah. No, you're right about that. You have and crushed all of these guys. Well, I, I, Chris Paul deserves it. I mean, what the Rockets just signed up for is never making it to the Western Conference Finals. All of these guys you crushed, never been. and now you want all of them. If they're going to meet up with Golden State, it'll be in the uh, Western Conference semifinals. You are the best, and when I say the best, I mean the very worst and most evil. <laughs> but this is happening. Yeah, the worst. But this time, the it's for real. worst. And when Pop comes back, I take Tim Duncan if he right. wants to go. You're going to get you them only, all. Well, you only need it for eight minutes You're going to get them all. And yeah. then at the end, what's going to happen? Hernan Gomez. Can't even decide which kind of Latin he wants to be. <laughs> I know it's Gatsian to entertain that. Especially and, and worry about a future roster move. When a pretty major roster move just happened. Support. But let's listen to me real quick. Did anybody see the Phil Jackson news coming so soon? Now the guy that LeBron had a public beef with is gone. Melo is still there in New York. All of a sudden, Chris Paul is opting in just to hang around Houston for one year. Shock trade. All these moves seem orchestrated. Yep. Believe. Connect the dots. What do you think they're discussing when they go on these summer vacations? What do you think? What do you think four best friends are discussing when they how go on to vacation? help you? How to help your team? <laughs> I think that that's on the banana boat. That's how do we make Stugatz's life better? Can you at least give me this because you know LeBron? You okay? guys never get anybody. Just listen, you always say basketball mecca. We're going to get everybody, and then you get one healthy Derrick Rose knee. It doesn't matter though. Dave Noah Gilbert too. wrote a, a borderline racist letter, and he got LeBron back. These guys go wherever they want. Can you hear me out for? Wasn't a second? it weird that LeBron signed? A two-year deal wasn't it weird dan help me out for a second and yes weird but he's also calculated it and this has been pre-arranged this was all discussed Dan, you know lebron he was down here for four years we've interviewed him many times you can can you at least see this can you give me this that lebron would love to spend the final whatever amount of years he has left in the league with his three best friends and if he could put that together he would absolutely put something like that together I won't give you that. Oh, come on. You have to admit that it's possible. Come on, I man. will admit that it's possible. I just love that it's possible with any team, and Stugatz has it happening on his team. No, that's team. the only well, team it's, it's possible. It's not possible oh, really? with any yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not possible with any team. You think that they're going to do this in OKC? Like, there are some cities that right. those guys, it's not a coincidence that they chose to join up in Miami when they chose to join up in Miami. There are only a few places where they would be willing to go. It's got to be a really well a team that's not very good right now. So Knicks or Lakers, and I believe it's going to be the Knicks. That's it. That's it. 50-50. Now, yep. there, there's no guarantee 
it's the Knicks, but they the the Banana Boat Boys they've given themselves a flexibility yeah. to choose the team best positioned. And Porzingis only has a seven million dollar qualifying offer. You need to pair up with a great young talent, so they can all opt out and decide where exactly that's going to be. But it wasn't going to be where Boom. Phil Jackson was. Phase one and two happened just like that. Just like that. And shame on Mike and Mike for laughing at my boy for throwing out that theory this Thank morning. He laughed. was well ahead of the game. They were laughing yeah. at Well me. ahead of the game. They were laughing we're at We're going to air that sound a year from now so often and laugh in their faces. Oh, so you've got it happening now. You're with Stugatz on this. This is going to happen I'm saying now. New York now has the best chance out of any of them because they got Porzingis cheap and Phil Jackson's gone. It's guaranteed. It's already done. First they ignore. I'm a believer. And they laugh. Yep. Then you win, Stu. Already That's done. not the quote. You just botched the you, entire you get the, got me. <laughs> I got a quote. I, a good friend of mine I used to play with, Fabian Washington. He's a, a cornerback also, and he's from Florida, has a very thick accent, and sometimes we wouldn't really understand what he would say. And he would say all the time, if you can correct me, you know what I mean. So, Dan, if you can correct me, you know what I mean. Stop wasting time, show killer. <laughs> <laughs> but what about the audience, Dominique? It's not about just me understanding what it is that you're saying. We're talking to millions of people. What about them? You got a point there. <laughs> but I, I bet Chris liked it. <laughs> Bad mitzvahs are expensive. Time for some ads. I mean, four people got that. Four people. Four. Still making the Chris at dinner joke. Don Lebatard. You want to make something smart really dumb? I give you <laughs> Stugatz. <laughs> Stugatz. Uh, you love sandwiches, huh? This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. John McEnroe going to join us in 15 minutes. That seemed like a great idea 24 hours ago. Now less so. <laughs> How happy is that guy today? <laughs> Things are happening very fast. Uh, Bill Simmons has told the Banana Boat reunion to rest in peace. Yep, that's reckless. Re- reckless. Uh, you might, I mean, listen, you wrote the book on basketball, and you might want to do a little research before you send that out, because from where I'm sitting, it's never been more likely to happen. Okay, They're all on one-year deals, man. Yeah, This has been cooked up, and it's been talked about for years. I mean, LeBron already sent out a tweet. My brother off to a new journey. Best of luck at CP3. H-Town, y'all got a great one coming to your city. Hashtag brotherhood. And you know what the hashtag brotherhood means. <laughs> it, means it means enjoy for a single oh. year. <laughs> yep. Uh, Stephen A. Smith is reporting that Carmelo Anthony, uh, if he gets a buyout, will head to Houston to join CP3 and James Harden. Well, one of the things that I read this morning was one of the reasons James Dolan got rid of Phil Jackson is he wanted nothing to do with buying out Carmelo Anthony. Wanted nothing to do with that. Like, would not offer it to him. Didn't want it. Was upset that Phil was about to do it. So, But who knows? I mean, that would have been a smart move. And he, as we know, was trying to get himself fired. So, of course, he would not agree to a smart move. Uh, why are you guys ignoring? Because you guys, this what's happening right now is, and this is always funny when this happens, right? Free agency is madness. It's everybody in the media runs into each other, clucking and screaming, just colliding, pinballing. Uh, many of us don't know salary cap permutation so it feels like you guys are ignoring that the knicks have a lot of money tied up in courtney lee and joakim noah the next couple of years after 2018 guys are you guys are ignoring that you've got all of these guys going on discounts to new york right just to be clear that that's the buyout joakim noah that's the buyout that's or the buyout. you staple that bad contract to uh, a more advantageous one to acquire correct courtney lee's not going to be tough to get traded i mean the guy's been traded 98 times yep Hashtag brotherhood. That's it. Say hashtag moneyhood. Hashtag brotherhood. Yep. They'll put that stuff aside. To They'll figure it out. You know who gets paid? I figured it out already. Cause so Carmelo will continue oh, to get great. paid. Wait, I love these. Well, hold Chris on. Paul let's, will hold continue on, hold to get paid. Wade doesn't let's, need any more all right, money. Well, let's back. Tra- hold on. Let's just get out of the way. He's done. Because I love when Stugatz figures these things out. <laughs> right. So let's just back off and let's let Stugatz have the floor with okay. how it is yeah. that this. Gets we got to get out of your way because we're going to play this tape a year from now when you're proven right. Thank yeah. you. Because Porzingis, they have him on the cheap for the next two years, so he's already fine. He's there. We're good there. Okay. 
Dwayne Wade doesn't care at this point, okay? He's going to get a buyout. He'll make whatever money he makes this year for doing nothing like he's done the last few years. And then he'll come to the Knicks, and he'll be arrested, Dwayne Wade, and he'll be good. And he'll play for like four, five, yeah, six million dollars right. a year, something it, like right, that. No. And I, what is and, Wade worth in the no, open market? And he'll average 50 points a game, too. Doesn't need to on this team. Because he's rested. Right, doesn't need to. Porzingis but he could, on the scores. If, if ever asked to, he could. This monster yeah. Knicks team. This isn't exactly amazing. getting out of my way. Oh, oh I'm I mean, sorry. My yeah, fault. My yeah, fault. My bad. You're right. You're right. You're right. My fault. My fault. Uh, so we have Porzingis, we have Wade on the cheap, and LeBron, he's fine because he signed a billion-dollar shoe deal, and he knows, listen, you know what? At the end of my career, I just want to play with my best friends and try to win the two guys who haven't been able to win championships on their own because they're not good enough. I'm going to try to win them championships. So I'll take less money. Carmelo, Paul, you take all the money. We're good. I'm going to win my best friend's titles before it's all said and done. That's it. That's how it works. LeBron... Five to seven million a year. Wade, five million a year. Chris Paul, tons of money. Carmelo Anthony, tons of money. And Porzingis, they already have on the cheap. Now, as far as Greg Popovich is concerned for their head coach, I don't know what they have to pay him. Right. And I mean, that, that won't affect their cap, so they could find some room. I'm on board with Stu. It sounds like it makes sense. And plus, Chris Paul, I think he has a 15% <laughs> yeah. uh, kicker, trade kicker that's going to kick in after this trade happens. Okay. It's not all about money, Dan. Right, let's slow down for just a second, okay? Because there are many people who don't understand this show and don't know what you're doing right now. I'm on to you. You're just simply agreeing with Stugatz at every turn. That's going to be what? your character from now on. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me finish. As we become first take, I am not finished with my thoughts. Call any GM in the league. They will tell you I am worth the money that I am paid. Your minute is up, Stugatz. Let me explain something to you. The show that is playing in hell right now is the Stugatz trade scenario show. I thought that that was the worst of the depths of hell. I hope Art Bryles is enjoying it. Come on. <laughs> well earned. But I have found the one show in the history of sports radio shows that is the worst, worse than Stugatz's trade scenario show, and it's Stugatz's trade scenario show to his team. Like, that is the worst show in the history. That is maximum Whoa. efficiency on the worst show in the history of sports radio. Don Lebatard. Called Common Sense Reporting, Dan. Connect the dots. Stugatz. I would not describe your sense as common. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. He's a three-time Wimbledon champion, four-time U.S. Open champion. He's got a new book, but seriously, it is available now. He's one of the most colorful figures in the history of American sports or sports in general. John McEnroe with us on ESPN Radio. Again, the book, but seriously, is available now. He is a giant Knicks fan. Yeah. How many games, thank you, John, for making time for us. How many games a year does John McEnroe go to? Uh, probably 15. Okay, and so how furious are you with Phil Jackson? Well, I thought it was a good move at the time, and I'm amazed that it turned out as badly as it did. Uh, the Zen master, I thought, was going to bring a lot to the table. Uh, it became apparent that uh, the way he was handling everything, particularly with Mello, who, you know, I was never like a major Mello fan, but I respected him as a, as a, he seemed like a good guy, and he certainly could bring some offense. And I think what you saw is what you got from the beginning. He didn't seem to make guys around him better, and I always sensed that Phil didn't really want to re-sign him, which made me sort of surprised when he did sign him to the max, well, almost the max deal, and then the no trade. But the way he bungled it, I thought, with, with Mello, you know, sort of trying to push him out the door, I think was, was poorly done. And um, I think at this stage, uh, because he couldn't get anyone to come really to the team, because he was insisting on this triangle, which I guess obviously had a lot of success with some awesome players, it was time to make a move. His new book, But Seriously, is available now, three-time Wimbledon champion, four-time U.S. Open champion, forever suffering Knicks fan, John McEnroe, <laughs> with us on ESPN Radio. Weren't you in the middle of that Oakley fight? Well, I don't know if I was in the middle of it, but I was sitting right in front of Charles, and he, you know, he had said hello to me, and I had forgotten that there was uh, apparently some ill will between the the owner and, and Charles, but um, it was uh, an unfortunate chain of events, clearly. 
to see what transpired. So I think that it was a lose-lose for everyone involved, and um, hopefully we'll end up somewhat uh, positively for all concerned because it was sort of a black eye for everyone. And um, I was amazed that it sort of went to the level it did. I was with my son watching, and I thought actually people were heckling Phil Jackson. Not Jim Dolan. So uh, I sort of missed missed what initially happened, but after that, it just sort of all spiraled out of control. Whose side were you on? Or it just by saying lose lose, does it mean you weren't on anybody's side? Well, I've been treated very well by by the Jim and and the people around there. They've been nice enough to sort of offer me. I mean, these tickets when you get a floor ticket. I don't always get those, but they're amazing, and you get to see these incredible athletes. And having grown up in Queens and been going to the Garden since I was eight and played there for many years, we had a big event there. It certainly means a lot to me to be able to be able to go to the Garden and see see the team play. So, having said that, um, I think Charles uh, uh, mishandled it after the initial when Jim, to me, agreed to apologize and meet and. And then he sort of demanded in a public apology and wasn't letting it go. And it seemed like um, I was actually, believe it or not, trying to tell Charles because it looked like he may end up hitting someone, which you don't want to see because he's a big, big man and he could, you know, deck somebody. And then he'd be in real trouble. So no one wanted to see that happen. So initially it seemed like uh, they didn't seem to have to push it to that level. And then Charles sort of took it up to another level. And unfortunately, um, when it seemed like, they were reaching out, which is, I don't think, and Jim would admit this, probably not a strong suit. Then it seemed like Charles wasn't accepting the apology enough. And I think it's still, as far as I know, there's still some type of lawsuit or something going on. And to me, that just continues to make it a lose-lose. Who's, uh, who's the worst decision that you've seen made with the Knicks the last couple of years? Give me the one that's made John McEnroe angriest. The last couple of years of Knicks basketball, uh, signing someone, uh, getting rid of someone, Porzingis, trade talk. Give me the thing the last few years that has made John McEnroe the angriest. Uh, well, there's a that's a pretty long list. Um, but I would have to say uh, hiring Hornacek. I mean, I don't get that at all. I mean, he seemed to be a, you know someone who would fit in better and maybe one of the teams that he played with, uh, whether it was Utah or Phoenix. And it just didn't seem like, even though he was a, a player that – you know, and from a distance, I respected him. He seemed like a good NBA player. Didn't seem like that ever had any hope of uh, of working here. I mean, it's, he's still here, and 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 the way those the coaching situation's been handled. Mike Woodson sort of got pushed out. He seemed like he had been doing a reasonably good job. So I, I I'd say that maybe the most infuriating, even more than that, was Phil deciding not to coach because uh, he sort of tried to make some moves, and not all of them were bad. I actually thought I was obviously crazy, but before last year when he signed, I mean, Yannick Noah is an old friend of mine, so yeah. seeing Joachim <laughs> Noah come to the Knicks, I know it was a dream come true for him. Yes. And I've known him since he was six months old. <laughs> and to see that and to see how that hasn't, obviously, it's been a nightmare for him with the injuries and everything. And among are, other are, things. are you mad at Yannick Noah because his son is terrible? <laughs> I don't think his son is terrible. I think his son is a, an excellent player, but unfortunately, uh, well, he's been terrible for your team. He, he he's been ter- he, he, you know, he he got he had some, some some bad injuries, and he hasn't been the player that he expected, or I expected, or anyone expected. And I know no one feels worse about it than he does, because uh, he doesn't want to be the guy that sort of got this great contract and doesn't produce. And I think he's actually. Someone that can, he, you know, he's like that Draymond Green type of player. You know, he, he brings a lot of energy and a lot of effort. And, you know, three, four years ago, if you had said, uh, I don't know the exact amount of years, but if you had said who is better uh, or who do you want more, Green or Noah, there would have been an argument for that. Now that seems crazy at the moment. Um, I didn't think, you know, uh, when you bring Derek Rose in for one year, you would think he had a lot of incentive to do well. And uh, it looked like I thought they could win 50 games. I really thought that they had brought some people together and they were trying to bring it up. And, um, and it just doesn't seem like we can, we've gotten some breaks, but everything, it, it has to come stems from some degree from what Mello brings to the table. And Mello's got to figure out a way, and I think it's conceivable, to make players around him better. And I think the best thing that could happen to him is if he sort of 
gave the reins to some degree to Porzingis and let him do his thing, and it would take some pressure off him having to be compared to LeBron James or one of these guys that you see make players better. Let's uh, New book, But Seriously, is available now. John McEnroe is a tennis player. We are talking basketball with him nonstop and delighting in talking <laughs> basketball with him nonstop. Again, the new book, But Seriously, is available now. We want to run a couple of theories by you and want to see how it is that you consume them as a Knicks fan. If I were trying to make the argument that Phil Jackson did a good job the last three years or that Phil Jackson was actively trying to do stuff to get fired, which would be the better argument to take in a debate? <laughs> I would say that he was trying to do some stuff because he picked up Noah, who was a former Defensive Player of the Year. Derek Rose is a former MVP. Okay, but you'd be wrong. I'd have the better yeah, argument. Yeah, well, Courtney Lee supposedly could play. I'd have the better yeah, argument. He... McEnroe, I'd have the better <laughs> argument. Yes or no? I mean, uh, he, he... You'd have the better argument? Yes, because uh, he, yes. he, he alienates Carmelo Anthony, his best player, on purpose. He goes out and says they're going to trade Perzengas. He, he, he calls LeBron's guys he posse. He initially do that. He did not initially... McEnroe. You know, he was trying Carmelo to get fired, bus, and he extorted, okay? he, he extorted the Knicks. He extorted the Knicks. I think he's apparently he's giving his money back, or he's donated it to the sponsorship of the Dan Lepitar show. Uh, that's what he should do. <laughs> yes, McEnroe, you're delusional yes, and emotional because you're a Knicks fan. <laughs> Phil well, Jackson, I'm a little delusional, yeah. But was John, think, John, think about this. After he opted in and got all the money, then it got really crazy. Right. Where that, he's right, falling right. asleep at uh, yeah, at, he's at falling asleep in the, workouts. He's yeah. talking about trading Porzingis. How mad were you when the news came across your screen that he was trying to trade Porzingis on you? I was uh, uh, visibly frustrated and upset. I'm not going to deny that. Where there's there's some concern about Porzingis as far as his health and you know being able to withstand the rigors of the NBA. I mean, he is a big guy, um, and I heard from people that I deeply respect that run incredible organizations that I was fortunate enough to talk with who run things in the NBA. Um, he's had some jobs where he's brought teams to titles, and he was concerned about. Um, uh, Porzingis is being able to withstand it. So that made me worry a little bit and at least think, okay, if something, which seems like an incredibly stupid idea, if they actually got something for it or they were able to, you know, convince Kevin Durant that, you know, he pulled his thing and maybe he wins one more because apparently he could opt out and be a free agent. It used to be that people wanted to come to New York. I mean, I never thought in my wildest dreams that LeBron James would go back to Cleveland. I did. I, you know, I thought. I, I mean, I give him a lot of credit for that, and I thought the thing he wrote, uh, that he wrote up when he re-signed with Cleveland, was amazing. I was doing some ESPN radio at the time, doing the local show here for a week, and I couldn't believe he did that. But now it seems like, I guess, for a lot of these NBA players, that doesn't seem to matter whether they're in Minneapolis or New York. I'm not so sure that's true, though. New York is. The, I'm, I'm biased, and I think you're down in Miami, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yes. Which is turning into a great city. When you know, when I played the junior tennis events in the '70s, you could the, the place was a ghost yeah, town. Yeah, it was. Hold you on know, a second. And, and, if I may that? interrupt you, hold on just a second. Right. If I may, the new book, but seriously, is available now. John McEnroe with us on ESPN Radio. Mike, is there anything I should be asking John McEnroe about that I'm forgetting? Anything in the news? Anything that hasn't come up? In <laughs> In the conversation? Oh, no, nothing. Nothing. No, nothing. 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 Okay, nothing. then let me do this if I can with you, John, if you don't mind. And I know you're not a piano bar, but I would love... John McEnroe was famous for his on-court rant. I don't know if you can summon this without actual rage, but can I get something from John McEnroe that would sound like you on the court ranting against everything the Knicks have done to you the last three or four years? Like, you got to be bleeping kidding me. Without the curse words, can I get 30 seconds of John McEnroe on the court seconds. mad at the Knicks, just venting at the Knicks? All right. Um, I'm going to do my best. You know, my voice is a lot lower than it used to be. I can't hit the notes of, you know, when, when I used to say, you cannot be serious! <laughs> For putting me through this the last five years. It seems like you guys have been a bunch of incompetent fools for way too long. But I still believe and I still have hope no. that someday soon no, no, the Knicks will be no, stay in character. the NBA title. No, stay in character. You it can't be stay positive. Mad. Just yeah. stay mad. Oh. Stay mad. Oh, try right. Stay mad. Yeah, try just keep ripping Phil. Keep, yeah. Try again. Keep being mad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Direct it at the lines, yeah. Judge. I mean, great Imagine. start. You got to a great start. It was a great start. It's Phil Jackson as the line judge. You guys are the pits of the world. Yes. You guys are incompetent fools. Yes. Yeah. 
How could you do this to us? <laughs> yes. Yes. Is that good? Glory oh, be to yeah. God. Oh, thank you, I'm sir. I'm getting a little tired. You know, it's, 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 it's you know, I, yeah. normally they pay me a little extra on the senior <laughs> store for that. But I, I did that for you, Dan. Just that was very nice. It's been a busy couple of days for you, John, with all the uh, with all the Knicks yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. I remembered the question well, I needed to ask McEnroe. I remembered. I remembered. What did you think of the Knicks first round pick? You know, I never heard of the guy, so uh, I know that um, apparently uh, there's a lot more and better European players that supposedly <laughs> play some basketball <laughs> where they, they know the basics. But, uh, you know, i got to be honest, that wouldn't have been – I don't know a lot about these college kids, and a lot of them are one and done, so they're all, you know, unpredictable anyway. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I mean – See you play. <laughs> Very good, John. Thank you. We enjoyed talking to you. New book. Thanks for having me. Guys. But seriously, available now. Don Levitard. Good work today. That was a fun show. Stugatz. It was also intergalactically stupid. This is the Don Levitard show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Chris Paul has been traded to the Rockets. Dominique Foxworth had to leave to prepare for highly questionable last five minutes. Me and Stugatz. Let's update the polls here at Levitard Show. We should have Daryl Morey on, the general manager of the Rockets, in the coming days. He yeah. has done a very good job yes. of getting big pieces when it's hard to get big pieces. I don't have all the polls updated. I don't know if Bill has them because, for some reason, they're just not updating. So maybe Guillermo has them and he can read the results or he's writing them down. I do have some of them, though. Was Straight Outta Compton a good movie? I watched it last night. I loved it. 64% of the audience said yes. I got to scroll up here. Better argument. Phil was trying to do a good job, or Phil was actively trying to get himself fired to extort James Dolan. 81% of the audience says trying to get fired. Those are all the ones I have right now. Okay, so we have two polls. Well, the other ones are coming in right now. So, Guillermo, what do you have? Would have been nice if one of you guys had told me that before we started here, we weren't going to be able to do the polls. Let's go. What do you got? All right. Is Neil deGrasse Tyson largely speculative? 52% of the audience said yes. <laughs> Should we have Neil deGrasse Tyson on with Chuck Nice? 64% said yes. Was it a goosebumps moment when the cops ran NWA out of the stadium and arrested them? 56% said no. Would America have preferred if Straight Outta Compton would have ended with the cops rushing the stage and arresting NWA? 55% of the audience said yes. Phil <laughs> so right. Jackson, when you did. Yep, those are all the polls. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Guillermo. <laughs> Mike, how'd you feel about how John McEnroe went? Uh, it was okay. It was fun. I think towards the end, I think people got what we were going for. We got him to yell. I enjoyed our time with him. The news cycle, man. Isn't that insane? The news was... cycle happened so fast that John McEnroe became a dated guest in like 12 hours. Yep. Well, you didn't want him. And Ryan Rossillo has him coming up next, too. He's even further removed. <laughs> okay, well, Ryan Rossillo <laughs> might actually ask him about some of the stuff that's interesting, which is not what we did with John McEnroe. I, I enjoy the interview. The only the only part that maybe I regret, I don't the Serena stuff, whatever, he smoked a joint with Mick Jagger, and I wanted that story. So, Rosillo, ask that question so I could hear it on the way home, please. Rosillo, can you do that for us, please? Ask John McEnroe about smoking a joint with Mick Jagger. 215 Eastern on that Rosillo interview. All right. John McEnroe, 215 Eastern with Ryan Rosillo. I'm exhausted, man. Yeah. The news. Well, it's about to get fun, right? These next couple of days are going to be fun because there's going to be a lot of free agent noise in basketball. Like, July 1st was the day when it was supposed to start getting crazy. Well, that's Woj's first day at ESPN, and it's going to be an interesting first day for Adrian Wojnarowski on July 1st because he's going to be breaking all that news for us. So uh, Bobby Marks, who is part of Woj's team, I guess, he uh, he tweeted out, Woj re uh, retweeted, that the Clippers could have $70 million plus in room during the summer of 2018. They're basically, they're essentially cleaning the slate and starting over is what they're saying. Um, yeah. Blake's gone. And They'll have ready. room yeah. for LeBron if he wants to play there, but the appeal of LeBron playing there, I thought, was Chris Paul. I yes. mean, it doesn't necessarily signal the end of the Chris Paul era in uh, Los Angeles. He could end up going back. Could happen. He opted in and got traded. Balmer, welcome to business failures. <laughs> you could be good at business elsewhere and you get into this business he bought the clippers for two billion dollars yep and now everyone's fleeing mm -hmm. 
That's not true. Micro- Microsoft had the Zune. You remember the Zune? <laughs> it's failed before. It's harder when you got a salary cap, when you can't throw money at problems, and when Chris Paul is ultimately actually more powerful when it comes to the transaction than you are. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. (laughs) Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer.